At the end of the Infinity Gauntlet, Thanos' granddaughter Nebula was defeated, and the Mad Titan decided to live life as a quiet hermit on a distant planet, free from his past responsibilities, reflecting on his decisions, and no longer with a thirst for power. Adam Warlock was the new possessor of the Infinity Gauntlet and its gems, promising to use their abilities wisely, though the heroes were skeptical, mainly Doctor Strange. In Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme number 36, Warlock's allies take Strange to him because they are worried for their friend. The power of the Infinity Gems already seem to be having an effect on him. Warlock explains his intentions to remove all ambition and competitiveness from the universe, forcing everyone to be good and noble. Doctor Strange warns him not to interfere with the balance of good and evil. The universe only functions with both. It will also mean the freedom of choice will be removed, turning every creature simple-minded. Strange casts a spell which causes the Soul Gem to show Warlock this truth, and he agrees to discontinue his current path. He must be more careful with the power of a god. And then, in Warlock and the Infinity Watch number 1, Eternity, the Living Tribunal, and the other cosmic entities summon Adam Warlock. They deem him unfit to wield the power of the Infinity Gems, make it so they cannot be used in tandem with one another ever again, a power they seem to have all of a sudden, and Warlock agrees to give them up, separating each one and giving them to the protectors of his choosing. He decides to pick his closest allies, Pip the Troll, Gamora, Drax the Destroyer, Moon Dragon, and himself, to form the Infinity Watch. The sixth and final gem, the Reality Gem, is given to a secret caretaker known only by him. The Mad Titan Thanos even joins in to aid them. The Infinity Watch series follows the title group as they prevent other beings from obtaining the Infinity Gems. One more thing I need to explain before diving into today's storyline is the character of Magus. He's the older and eviler version of Adam Warlock's soul from an alternate future that wants to ensure Warlock becomes him down the road and attempts to organize those series of events in his life. He would be stopped by Warlock and Thanos, who erased his timeline from existence, but just because they won the battle does not mean they won the war. We begin Infinity War on the unnamed planet at Thanos' quiet little farm. He has distanced himself from who he was before. The Mad Titan is being haunted by ghosts in a sense, his evil doppelganger, remnants of his past. The various computers in his farmhouse pick up readings that indicate the universe is in peril. He switches clothes and boards a newly reconstructed space throne, and sets off to investigate. Galactus finds Eternity in a catatonic state, and intends to find the being responsible. Thanos arrives and finds Eternity as well. The energy signature left by the culprit is somehow familiar. Thanos reaches the source of his readings within a massive construct deep in space that reminds him of the shrine he built to Mistress Death. The readings are immense, just short of the Infinity Gauntlets, and are coming from the rectangular module sprouting out of the building's ceiling. On Earth, Doctor Doom's scanners pick up the energy as well, and he is not frightened by it one bit. He simply views it as an opportunity. Wherever there is power, there is power to be gained. As Thanos investigates the energy source, a mysterious figure enters the room behind him. It's Magus, along with an evil version of Thanos, promising that the doppelganger is only a taste of what's coming. Magus explains that many paths lead to grandeur. There are endless possibilities that can create variations of the future. Thanos asks him about the source of the energy within the capsule. It's eerily familiar, though Magus dodges the question. He wants revenge and seeks ultimate power. Thanos wishes to protect reality, something he once sought to destroy. His priorities have changed. The insatiable hunger Magus seeks will never be fully fulfilled. Realizing that reasoning with Magus is futile, he pours out his wine and prepares to fight. Before he can though, Magus introduces Thanos to his army of evil doppelgangers based off countless heroes and villains in the Marvel Universe. 
He tells the Mad Titan to warn his alter ego, and as he laughs maniacally, transports Thanos back to his space throne, scrambling the energy signature and location of his base with magic in the process, so the Titan can no longer trace it. Left with even more questions than before, Thanos realizes he must find help if he is to stop Magus's schemes. Doctor Doom speaks with a mysterious figure to aid him in his search for this power. It's revealed as Kang the Conqueror, though Kang intends to sever his partnership with Doom should the opportunity present itself, and vice versa. Earlier in the storyline, we had cut to Iron Man being attacked by his doppelganger and losing. Wolverine was as well, but managed to claim victory. Mr. Fantastic picked up energy signatures, but was flanked by his evil twin. One of them grabbed a blaster and incapacitated the other, but you don't know which one. Mr. Fantastic calls a meeting with all the Marvel heroes he could muster, and Thanos arrives at Monster Island, where Adam Warlock and the rest of the Infinity Watch are located. Moondragon suggests that they contact the Avengers, but after the Infinity Gauntlet fiasco, they don't trust Thanos or Warlock for that matter. They need to figure out what Magus' end goal is, so Thanos demands that Pip transport them to Mistress Death's palace with his space gem so they can find the answer. Magus and the evil version of Thanos have been watching all along though, and their enemies are playing into their hands. Doom and Kang reach a source of fluctuating energy and notice Galactus' ship in the distance. The Devourer of Worlds has teamed with Doctor Strange, Nova, and Silver Surfer to search it out as well. They reach it and it contains immense mystical power. Galactus intends to use his ship's scanners to find out where all of it is really coming from. Kang and Doom activate a trace beam and will follow them to the location. The Infinity Watch arrive at Mistress Death's palace, where they knock out her guard and enter the Infinity Well chamber, hoping to learn the unknown mysteries of Magus and his plan. The Well walks us through everything we already know in regards to who Magus is, an evil, alternate version of Adam Warlock from the future, who started the Universal Church of Truth and was worshipped as a god. After defeating Thanos, Warlock relinquished the power of the Infinity Gauntlet and created the Infinity Watch. While he was omnipotent though, in an attempt to obtain pure logic and neutrality, Warlock expelled the good and evil within himself. Magus was recreated at the crossroads of reality and explored five of these separate realities or realms to acquire five mysterious sources of near infinite power. The Infinity Well can't even determine what exactly they are, only speculate. Magus can also mask his actions using magic, and his doppelgangers are beings from another dimension he has altered. Mistress Death confronts the intruders, but Warlock teleports them away before they can be punished. The Well then offers to tell her Magus' true intentions. Mole Man informs Warlock that Mr. Fantastic has called a meeting with all the superheroes and they make their way to it. With Wolverine's acute sense of smell, he believes Mr. Fantastic and Iron Man are imposters. Reminds me of Secret Invasion. Daredevil comes to the same realization and attacks, Billy Club to the throat. Because no one really knows who is an imposter and who isn't, it becomes pandemonium, a damn free-for-all. Mr. Fantastic presses a button though and reveals a gamma bomb. It explodes, but Susan Storm is able to contain it, and Thor creates a whirlwind to get rid of the fallout and sends it into space. Before they can get any answers out of the phony Reed Richards and Iron Man, Magus and the evil doppelganger of Thanos arrive to portal them away. Obviously, Magus is successful in framing the real Thanos by doing this. The heroes of Earth already don't trust him, but even his heroic deeds of late won't help him much. Galactus and his crew, as well as Doom and Kang, are on their way to the source, but now the Infinity Watch is as well, and the heroes of Earth. All their paths are about to converge it seems. Doom and Kang arrive, but it's only another energy breadcrumb on this giant trail. As they depart, the Infinity Watch appear. I want to stress that Magus has been watching all the events of this storyline unfold. 
He has been leading everyone on a path he has constructed, manipulated, and blanketed with his magic, whichever he deems necessary at any given time. Wanting to spice things up a bit and inject a little chaos, Magus has his army of evil doppelgangers attack Earth, while their numbers are reduced. Before Adam Warlock, Thanos, and the rest of the Infinity Watch can depart to the next destination, they are confronted by a group of Marvel heroes that have been sent to the source. Galactus and his crew arrive, activating a transport beam to end the fighting and hopefully get some useful information out of all of them. Doctor Doom and Kang are able to reach Magus' base of operations before anyone else can, hoping to access the power of the rectangular shaped container for themselves. While Magus and the Thanos doppelganger are distracted by all the other pawns on the playing field, Doom and Kang figure out the source of all this power, five cosmic cubes from separate dimensions, set to explode if anyone tries to claim them. While Doom and Kang attempt to seize control of the command center, Doctor Strange and Silver Surfer want to temporarily leave Galactus so they can save their friends on Earth. However, Galactus just disrupts the energy broadcast Magus is sending to Earth, incapacitating the evil doppelgangers. That seemed easy. Galactus activates a powerful cerebral scan of all those aboard his ship so they can see each other's memories and their perspectives merge. There is no more fighting and everyone now understands each other. Adam Warlock wishes to fight fire with fire and asks for each member of the Infinity Watch to give him their Infinity Gems so he can recreate the Gauntlet. He even has the Reality Gem, which means that mysterious protector I told you about earlier must be somewhere in the vicinity. Warlock states that who it is doesn't matter, all that matters is that the heroes possess the power of the Infinity Gauntlet. The gems don't work though, due to the ruling of the Living Tribunal I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Galactus offers to address the Living Tribunal though and have the ruling changed. He takes Gamora with him, feeling Warlock and especially Thanos would not help sway the decision. After they leave, Magus and evil Thanos use a portal to grab Warlock and obtain the currently useless Infinity Gauntlet. It's revealed that Magus has been planning to merge the Milky Way galaxy with a duplicate one, one he will have full control over, filled with evil doppelgangers. He has even entranced the people of Earth with magic, so the transition can happen much more smoothly. Thanos grabs the ultimate nullifier from Galactus's ship, described as the strongest weapon in the universe. Hopefully it can save this reality. To destroy the Magus with it, one would have to sacrifice themselves in the process, something he convinces Kazar to do. He walks away with a smug grin. Magus takes the Infinity Gauntlet from Warlock and reveals that he has orchestrated everything so its power could be returned. Kazar is sent through a portal by Thanos to stop Magus, but he hesitates when he gets there. Thanos, Captain America, Drax, and the rest of the Avengers decide to go in as well. The Living Tribunal refuses to change his decision and states that because Eternity came to him with the Infinity Gem issue, he must be the one to make it now. Galactus bonds with Gamora in the hopes of using their combined powers to take Eternity out of his catatonic state. With Sneak 100, Doom and Kang attack Magus and are able to destroy the control console, keeping his base hidden, making it wide open for an attack by the Ultimate Nullifier. Magus flies towards the containment units to use their wish-granting powers. Doom double-crosses Kang. Magus finds that the cosmic cubes are missing and is attacked by Doom from behind. Having been temporarily knocked out, Adam Warlock awakens and flies towards the sound of fighting. Doctor Doom is able to down Warlock on top of severely injuring Magus. Doom demands that Magus hand over the Infinity Gauntlet. But before he can, Eternity is revived and grants the Infinity Gems their combined power back. The Magus is now in possession of a fully realized Infinity Gauntlet. His first action, have Kazar disappear from existence and place the Ultimate Nullifier within his own hands. Crucified, Adam Warlock is subjected to all the abilities of the Infinity Gems. Magus has adjusted to their power faster than Warlock and Thanos had before and is relishing in his victory.
The heroes go through a portal to confront Magus and are met with their doppelgangers. As they fight, they realize Thanos didn't follow. Instead, he changes the teleporter's coordinates to Magus's control room where he comes face to face with his evil twin. Galactus and Gamora return and realize the mistake they have just made. Whoopsie. They all transport themselves to aid the other heroes in the fight against their doppelgangers and Magus snaps his fingers, causing the evil versions of them to disappear. He then snaps his fingers again and all of them are sucked into vortexes, becoming a part of Magus's new trophy room. What a collection. Thanos defeats his doppelganger and confronts Magus before he can finish off Warlock. Magus uses the power of the Infinity Gauntlet to force Thanos to bow before him. The Mad Titan is able to distract Magus long enough that Adam Warlock is able to break free and grab hold of the Gauntlet. Both beings have a battle of wills, with the fate of the cosmos hanging in the balance. Warlock is able to release an immense burst of energy from the gauntlet, which creates a being that is half eternity and half infinity, the twin cosmic beings. They incapacitate Magus, and Adam Warlock is left in a catatonic state. Thanos reveals to the other members of the Infinity Watch that he and Warlock knew Magus couldn't resist the tempting Infinity Gems, so they made a replica of the Reality Gem. The one Magus had in the Infinity Gauntlet was a fake, but he was too drunk with power to notice, giving them a slight advantage. The protector of the Reality Gem is still a mystery, who could it be? Eternity appears and declares that the restrictions on the Infinity Gems have been put back in place. They will not be removed in the future under any circumstances. Thanos departs a changed individual, far from what he once was and for the better. Once a worshipper of death, now he considers himself one of the living. The Magus finds himself within Warlock's Soul Gem. He's trapped and vows to return with an army of psychics. But he notices that he phases through beings in that realm. He has become essentially nothing. He is less than nothing. Thanos returns to his farm and self-reflects. Is he a hero, villain, both, or neither? He feels the changes that are happening within him, and Gamora was right. This old dog can learn new tricks. He understands now that knowledge is true power. He contemplates that if he had the ultimate power once again, would he even want it? He even wonders who stole the cosmic cubes from Magus's hideout. Adam Warlock had expelled all the good and evil from himself. The evil was defeated, but what about the good? So there you have it, Infinity War. Where do I begin with this one? Well, for starters, I feel out of all the Infinity Saga storylines I have reviewed thus far, this one is the weakest. They seem to be dropping in quality as we go. With that said, it's far from bad. There are a lot of interesting ideas brought to the table with it, and its themes dive into the notion of good versus evil, as well as one's duality as a whole. Several times throughout the storyline, Thanos himself is haunted by his past. You can assume it's just the evil doppelganger watching him, or it could be the evil side of his psyche creeping in, either or. Thanos' arc in this storyline is definitely one of its strengths. After spending time on his farm away from everyone else contemplating his life, past decisions, and purpose moving forward, he has a greater understanding of himself. He becomes a hero, or at the very least an anti-hero, who values more than just power. He wants to save this reality and cares more for life than he ever has before. He's still a villain deep down, but he fights for the greater good when necessary, keeps his ward, and remains loyal, for the most part. Much like the previous storyline Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War has issues related to its pacing. It's also longer and because of this has much more filler. However, this makes sense because the story, for the first half or two thirds of it, involves the heroes following a trail of breadcrumbs. They're left confused and figuring everything out, much like we are as the audience. I feel not enough of these pieces click together until much later in the story though, leaving the first half or two thirds feeling somewhat empty and hollow. I get that their quest is a fool's errand because Magus is manipulating everything from behind the scenes, but still, not enough notable stuff is really happening in the early parts of this story, and you're left somewhat unsatisfied as a result. And branching off of that, let's look at the villain himself, the Magus. 
I was not familiar with this character at all prior to reading Infinity War, but now I feel I have a greater understanding and respect for this character. With that said, I do still think he is a fairly weak antagonist, all things considered. He comes from an alternate future where he was worshipped as a god. He was stripped of that when he was stopped by Adam Warlock and Thanos, and his reality was erased from all existence by theirs. He views himself as a unique being, and wants revenge against Warlock and the Mad Titan for what they did to him. His final goal is to acquire the fully realized Infinity Gauntlet, and to merge two realities together. On the surface, all this stuff makes sense, I have nothing against it at all. What I do have a problem with is how overcomplicated his plan seems. He wants to confuse the heroes, muddle their pursuits with countless distractions, and cause chaos. The very nature of these things lack focus, which in turn, make the entire storyline lack focus at parts, everything I just mentioned. Magus' scheme involves the use of magic and illusion, and not only is that left far too vague for too long, you don't really know what his plan is, but Magus' abilities are also left extremely vague. Apart from hiding his actions from everyone else, you don't really have a firm understanding of what it is he can actually do, and I think that can be a bit problematic at times. Magus stresses that he is better than Thanos, he doesn't share the same weaknesses as him and will succeed where he failed, but the thing is, he doesn't, at all. When he gets the gauntlet, he just fucks around with it, toying with Adam Warlock, and not much else. Yeah, he stops all the heroes, and Thanos later explains that he was drunk with power and distracted by it, but that doesn't really matter. Because his plan is so unnecessarily complicated, and he doesn't follow through with really anything he says, this character comes off as not only hypocritical, but incompetent. Villains can be stubborn, they're allowed to be, we all know this, but I hate it when they are made incompetent. It makes your heroes appear as such too, which is bad. Mind you, there are a few clever moments with Magus, I think when he inadvertently frames Thanos, that's an interesting idea, and yeah, blanketing his scheme from all the heroes and cosmic entities is badass. He manipulates them all, but his plan and motivations still seem too complicated when they didn't need to be. I don't know, this storyline gets kind of muddled, but then again, that was the very nature of Magus' plan in the first place. It was probably intentional by the writers, but I think the story as a whole suffers because of it. What do you guys think of the Infinity War? Make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Also, subscribe to the channel to help support future content, and stay tuned next week when I review the next storyline in the Infinity Saga, the Infinity Crusade. As always, thanks for watching and listening, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.